Okay, so we're going to talk about some examples of approximations and non-elementary non integrals with Taylor series. So I'm going to go through these two types of problems. So um, we are going to use Taylor series to help us estimate these integrals. And in both of these, we're asked to find an error of magnitude within some, some given amount. So let's just start with the first one. Okay. So I want to use a series to estimate the integral's value with an error of magnitude less than 10 to the negative fifth. So there's kind of two pieces to this. So the first piece um, is that we want to just first estimate the integral. So we're going to ultimately integrate a series. So we're going to rewrite all of this as a series. So the key to these types of problems are knowing your basic series. So I consider these to be like the top three most basic Taylor McLaurin series. Um, so you can pause the video if you need to, to write these down. And then here they are in series form. So if you know these, it's going to make the problem just significantly easier to approach versus having to like derive the whole thing. Okay. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to literally restate all of this, but where I have this e to the negative x, I'm going to replace it with this series. And where I have an x, I'm going to replace every x with a negative x, as you see in here. So I'm just going to go ahead and get that started. So let's go back here. So I'm going to write this part out in green just so you can kind of track what I'm doing. So this will be 1 minus x plus negative x squared over 2 factorial, um, let's see, I'll do one more, plus negative x cubed over 3 factorial, and I will just denote that this is going to keep going, so this will be negative x to the n over n factorial, so on and so forth. So there's me writing out my series, then, so that's the series, I'm going to write out the minus 1, so I'm just going to continue the problem, minus 1, and then all of this divided by x. So I've literally expanded this series within the context of all of this, okay? So now I want to simplify all of this. So what I notice uh, is that the ones drop out and then all the rest of this stuff can be divided by x, right? So this will become negative 1 plus, let's see, this, this is x squared over this x, so this just becomes x over 2 factorial. This next one will be negative, and now this will be x squared over 3 factorial. And, and now I see a pattern emerging here, so I feel pretty comfortable writing this out as negative x um, to the n minus 1 over n factorial. Oops, n factorial. Okay, cool. So, um, great. What do I do with this? <laughs> so the next thing that I want to do is, um, so we are integrating. So I'm going to set up my little integral, but now I'm going to use this as the integral. So I've got all of this stuff and oops. I'm actually just going to write dot, dot, dot. I won't worry about out to the nth degree quite yet. Um, so I can see what the pattern is. So let me clear some space. And now we're going to integrate. So this becomes negative x plus x squared over 2 times 2 factorial minus x cubed over 3 times 3 factorial. Okay, and I feel like I already see the pattern here. So this will be x to the n over n times n factorial, so on and so forth. Um, oops, and I guess there's actually a, sorry, my bad. There should be a negative 1, um, a negative 1 to the, let's see, what do I want to make that? Negative 1 to the n plus 1, I guess, and then x to the n. Um, I actually don't even really need this. I just kind of did it because I'm used to finding patterns at this point. Um, okay, so anyways, okay, so now all of this needs to be evaluated from 0 to 0 0.4. And this is where that whole error of magnitude less than 10 to the negative fifth is going to come in. Okay, so 
what is this really asking for? So let's, let's think about the calculation for a moment. So if I plug in this 0.4, that's going to give me some tiny decimal, right? And then if I subtract off me plugging in the zero, so the zeros are for sure just going to make all these zeros. So what this really comes down to is just understanding what is going on with this port 0.4 calculation that gets me within this error. Okay. So, um, let me write out a few more terms, um, or actually, let me, let me just write out the calculation here. So I'm going to have this, so I'm going to just plug in a few values here. This is kind of what I'm trying to do. And okay. So I'm going to keep going. Okay. So the real question is where do I stop with this? And so, to get your error of magnitude within this amount actually requires you to understand what's going on with each of these terms. So um, I am going to just jump right to, I actually calculated out a couple of terms. So here I've got 0.4 to the 3 times 3 factorial, 0.4 to the 4th times 4 over 4 times 4 factorial. So I've evaluated all of these. The best rule of thumb for the error, I, I kind of look for two things. So I'm looking for a term that is smaller than this error. And I also want to stop my series when I have at least crossed this many decimals, I guess. That, that's like how I kind of structure, I guess, where to stop my error. So, and actually I just realized I forgot a a zero here. So, uh, sorry about that. This should have been four zeros. Okay. So, um, now that I'm looking through this, so this term goes out to as many decimal places as I need, but this term is bigger than my error term. So this is, so this at least checks off one of the criteria. And then the following term, this is definitely smaller than my error term. So these are like the two, I guess, keys that you're looking for, for where to stop your error term. So I want to stop my series here in this case. Going back to this, where do I stop this? I stop this at the fifth term. Five factorial. And so then from here, if I just calculate all of this out, um, so, so this is the stopping point. Okay. So that was the, the big thing. This is telling me the stopping point. And now I can just calculate at this stopping point and, um, I'll just tell you what the answer is. You'll have to plug it all into your calculator, but, um, here's your, your sum. So there's the estimate of the integral. Okay, so let's do it again um, with this same idea. Now, I strongly suggest if you are struggling with this that you try this one on your own. I've kind of outlined the idea of this for you. So I strongly suggest that you try this on your own. Hit play when you think you've got it or if you're stuck. Okay, so first things first, um, I'm going to take my E to the X series and where I see an X, I'm going to replace all the X's with negative X squared. So let me set that up. Um, so I'm going to set up, oops, I'll set up this integral. Okay. So we are going to use one minus, uh, let's see. I'm sorry. So let's go like this one plus negative X squared plus negative X squared, I don't know why I'm having so many problems, negative x squared squared over 2 factorial. Uh, the next term will be negative x squared. Oh my god. Okay, there we go. That cubed over 3 factorial. Okay, so on and so forth. Uh, dx. Okay, so here's where I'm starting. 
So let me just simplify this. So this is 1 minus x squared plus x to the fourth over 2 factorial minus x to the sixth over 3 factorial, so on and so forth. Okay, so let's go ahead and integrate. So this is going to give me x minus x cubed over 3 plus x to the fifth over 5 times 2 factorial minus x to the seventh over 7 times 3 factorial. Um, let's see. Let's go out maybe one more. Um, yeah, we can just leave it at that, I guess. Okay, so let's do that. So I want to simplify this just a little bit more, so I'll make some space. Okay, so oh, I also need to keep my limits of integration. Sorry about that. Okay, so let's now rewrite this. So this will be x minus x cubed over 3 plus x to the fifth over 10 minus x to the seventh over 42. I did actually figure out one more term, so plus x to the ninth over 216. Okay, so now we're kind of down, oh, and, and let's just keep that going. So now we gotta figure out where do we stop. Okay, so now it comes down to kind of that criteria I talked about with the errors. Now, one thing I've, I've found kind of helpful um, if you're like trying to guess where you should start plugging in numbers, probably someplace around like this level of exponents. So like something around, we don't have an, a negative eight here, but like, I don't know, I'll try like five, seven, and nine. So I'll try these three terms to plug in the point one. So once again, just like in the last example, so I've plugged in point one for all of these. All right, so we don't want to cut off the error until we've at least reached a term that goes to the 10 to the negative eighth decimal places. So if I take a look at 0.1 to the fifth over 10, so this only goes um, out six decimal places, and then the next term goes out, uh, I, I'm not sure how many this is, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this goes out ten decimal places. So now this surpasses the number of decimal places that I, I want to get within my error to. So this is probably a good stopping point. So even though this is less than the desired error, this is the first term that also like exceeds the number of decimal places that we needed to get to. So this would be a good cutting off point. And then the next term is also definitely less than this term. Um, so this will be where our, this, this now guarantees that we get within that error. So going back here, where do I cut this off? So I actually can cut this off then at the seventh term. And so when all is said and done, if I plug negative one into this, polynomial here, I get this tiny little decimal, uh, 0 0.0996676643. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a little bit of a better idea of like what to do with these errors and then like a more solid idea of how to use integration. So I'm going to leave the video at that and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.